Mercury is the innermost planet of the solar system. Do you know why it is? We don't know neither. Even though it's the closest planet to the sun within the solar system, we don't know why it's there. Mariner 10 got this glimpse. My old advisor, Jim Head, used to describe it as seeing your next door neighbor walk up and down the path every day and knowing a little bit about them, what car they drove, what kind of house they lived in, but really knowing nothing else about them. Um, by understanding Mercury, we can start to understand more about the Earth. It's a terrestrial planet, just like the Earth, the Moon, Venus. It's basically one of us. We would like to understand how our solar system is formed, where we came from. And for that, it's important that you study all the pieces you have in order to get the picture together. Mercury's a real oddball. It's, it's a very, very small um, planet, and yet it has a magnetic field. So other small planets don't tend to have a magnetic field because the core of the planet has frozen, which stops the, the processes that can drive the, the creation of that magnetic field. So a really interesting thing about the four terrestrial planets is that only two of them have a magnetic field and two of them don't. So the Earth and Mercury both have a magnetic field and that's because they have a liquid iron core that's in motion and so that generates a, a large-scale magnetic field. The Messenger spacecraft has, uh, has now given us greater detail of this magnetic field. It's a dipole field like at the Earth uh, and, and for me that was one of the most interesting things when I first uh, came across uh, Mercury. It has a huge density. It's, it's a planet closest to the Sun so it has high temperatures on the surface up to 450 degrees temperatures on Earth you see in a pizza oven, <laughs> but that's what we uh, will encounter on, on Mercury. But up to a few years ago, we believed that uh, Mercury is a planet quite boring because uh, we didn't know so much of the planet, but now we have the, the images, the data of the messenger. We discovered that it is really inter interesting. Knowing Mercury, we can know something more even on the Earth how the Earth evolved in the last four billion years. Mercury was explored by a flyby uh, spacecraft, Mariner, in the 70s. And we look Mercury as a, maybe a boring uh, second moon with full of craters. And then after that, we, 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 we understood that it is more than a second moon. It has a lot of tectonic features. It has a magnetic field. Now we know that. It has also a volcanic history like on the Earth. Messenger has shown us that it's um, really quite different than we expected it to be and so we're having to rethink a lot of our models for how planets form and evolve as a result of the Messenger data from Mercury and Bepi Colombo will help us to understand that even more. As a scientist you would go to the lab and set up an experiment and then you start turning knobs. For example you ramp up the voltage and you measure uh, the current and try to find whether there is a re relation between the two. Then you come up with a theory, you put down an equation, and that's big progress in science. And unfortunately, we can't do that with planets. You can't turn knobs on planets. But you can look at other planets that are already there. And what you can also do is you can do a computer model of a certain process, like, for example, the formation of the, the core in Mercury. And on the computer, it looks nice, and then you have to test it. That means that the planets that exist are test cases for your theories. You have to go there and see, is this something I can understand? Is it something I can explain with the current uh, theories? Or do I have to change and come up with something new? No planet is the same. You think that you go to a planet, it's going to be, you know, Saturn will be like Jupiter. It's not. It's like Saturn. Um, and, you, you, you know, you explore a different planet that you haven't been to before and you think it might be like Earth or like the Moon. And then it turns out it's like itself. They're on a spectrum. Mercury is at one end of the spectrum, very, the smallest planet in the solar system, closest to the sun, um, it has no atmosphere, it has a very weak magnetic field, um, it has an interesting surface and geology uh, which we need to understand in order to understand where it sits in the grand scheme of, of the solar system. Before Mariner and before Messenger, it just sort of looks like a slightly larger version of the moon. I think that's not very interesting just a sort of, it's another airless cratered body, there's plenty of those in the solar system. But it turns out it's got a magnetosphere, which is very weird, it shouldn't do, it's too small and it's too near the sun. It doesn't really make sense, it turns out it must have this huge, huge iron core, which means in turn that it probably formed in quite a weird way, and that means that by looking at it we can work out quite a lot about how all planets formed. It's a very small planet, it is very close to the sun, and that means it can only be seen 
just before sunrise and just after sunset. So it's a difficult planet to observe from the ground, and that means we know far less about it than other planets in the inner solar system. It's easy to go there, but it is not easy to, to stop there <laughs> because you, you are close to the sun. As Mercury is much closer to the sun than Earth, it should be under the much stronger influence of the activity of the star, the sun. And as a plasma, space plasma physicist interested in magnetospheric dynamics, uh, what, what's going on in the space around the planet, Mercury is such an attractive place because things must be crazy. It's really, really strongly driven by the solar wind. It's a very dynamic system. So if we understand what's happening at Mercury, that's going to help us to understand the dynamics of the Earth system too. So one of the most important things that, that we want to learn about Mercury is, is all about the planet itself. Um, so for example, how it was formed, how it has evolved as a body over time, what's happened to it in its history, um, how the surface has changed, we want to understand the geology, the interesting features that we see on the surface. And one of the important aspects of that is understanding the details of what the surface is actually made of. I'm a geologist, so I like places that have geology going on, processes affecting the crust and the interior and volcanic eruptions and faults and surface history. And Mercury's got all that. If it's formed from the same stuff as the Earth did, and we expect so in the inner solar system, the same stuff flying around during the birth of the planets, it, it should have the same size core relative to its rock, but it doesn't. So it's lost most of its rock. So its birth was extremely violent. The rock was somehow stripped away, leaving most of the original core and the very thin, impoverished rocky mantle around it, which has developed volcanism and formed a crust and so on. So something very strange happened in Mercury's birth to give it this big core, or rather leave the core there but strip away most of the rock. Quite possibly it was what's called a hit and run impactor. It came in, it careened off Venus or careened off the Earth and most of its outer part was stripped away, leaving the remnant core in a very thin rocky shell. And how it did that and still hung on to the volatile elements which are abundant at Mercury is a problem. Some people are suggesting that Mercury was never where it was. It was, it was the impactor. It hit something in the inner solar system and it remained as Mercury. And they think that is why it has a large core and a small mantle, which is the part of the planet which surrounds the core. Because the mantle was stripped away during the impact, but the core remained intact or largely intact. And then it floated into the inner solar system where it sits today. Finding out about Mercury will help us complete the set. It's not a place that's remotely likely to host life at the present or in the past. It's, it's too close to the Sun, but we've only got four terrestrial planets, only four rocky planets. So we can't understand how the Earth or Mars works without understanding its, its neighbours. Ultimately, planetary science is about why we are here, the question why we are here. Then that leads you to the question that how, how is the terrestrial region uh, the region of the solar system around Earth is formed. We have Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. And if you look at them, Mercury and Mars are smaller. And you have two big ones, Venus and Earth. So that should be telling us something about how this region in the solar system is formed, our, our ultimate question. So Mercury is sitting at the edge, but sitting at the edge doesn't mean that it's, it's less important.